Hello, my name is Sarah. It's so nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I just want to give a little bit of an introduction before we start. I'm a sophomore here at ASU studying biochemistry and global health. Now, just from hearing that, you might be thinking that I don't have an authoritative perspective on HIV AIDS and that I'm just learning. So why would you listen to me, right? Um, and I know in the past I can come, I've come from a place of ignorance maybe about the subject because I didn't have the education that I do now, but now I've made an effort to learn and to educate myself so we can have a new conversation um, together that is different than the ones we've had in the past. And I'm telling you this because I'm in service to you, and I want you to know what I've done and who I am so that you know I'm able to be helping you in this way. Um, I've been studying sexual health and working with experts and professors in sexual health throughout this past semester, and I've been training on how to have these types of conversations with people about sexual health. And again, this is my major of study, um, and both biochemistry and global health do heavily relate to HIV AIDS and just sexual health in general. So before I learned all about HIV AIDS, I was sitting where you were and I was clueless. I was ignorant. I didn't know anything about the disease. Um, even growing up, especially as a woman, I was not exposed to the type of conversation that needs to be had, like the one we're having today. Um, living in America, as you know, comes with its pros and cons. And one of those cons, in my opinion, is the amount of information that we get regarding sexual health. And um, from our teachers, from our parents, I think that it should be discussed more just like this. So learning and training in this topic over the past months has been exactly what I needed growing up. And um, now I hope that I can give you the information that maybe you have been lacking or just more information from what you've already learned. Um, this directly led me to needing, again, to become more humble and educate myself. I thought that I didn't have enough experience to be teaching and talking with other people that I've never met or maybe I have about HIV AIDS, but now I feel so much more confident about where I am and where we're going. Now, before we begin our conversation, I just wanted to thank you for hosting me and having me today. Um, and now also this conversation should be no longer than five, six minutes, but just in case the bathroom and the water fountain are just down the hall, um, if you need to take a phone call, please just exit the room and come back when you're finished. We'd love to have you back. And I will also answer any questions at the end of our conversation. Um, I would also like to acknowledge that this is a safe space. Um, we are all different in our own ways, but I'm hoping that we can remove those differences while we all relate over the topic of sexual health and HIV AIDS, because it is all something that we can relate to. Um, now, first, it is important to know that there is no cure anywhere in the world for HIV, but it is 100% preventable. We need to understand how HIV is and is not transmitted to protect ourselves and our loved ones. To begin, HIV stands for human immunodeficiency virus. So if it's human related, where can we not find or get HIV? Anyone know? Yeah. Good. So you can't get it from animals. What else? Yes. Food. You can't get it from food. Good. So if the virus is regarding humid, humans and it isn't in food or animals, it's important to know that it's not everywhere in humans. One great barrier that acts as a wall against HIV where HIV is not is unbroken skin. It provides 100% protection against HIV. So if I put pure HIV on my skin and I rub it into my unbroken skin, rub it in, it would never I would never become HIV positive because unbroken skin fully blocks HIV from entering the body. If unbroken skin provides such a good barrier against HIV, then how are people becoming HIV positive? Well, although unbroken skin acts as a wall that stops HIV, there are four doors that allow HIV inside the body. So can someone tell me what one of those four doors is? Yes. Good. The vagina. So the vagina is one of four doors that HIV can enter into the body. What else? Any other? There's three more. Good. Open wounds. Exactly. So again, I said unbroken skin, but if the skin is broken, that means that there's an open wound that can allow HIV to enter the body. Two more. Yes. Good. The tip of the penis. So the tip of the penis is the third door where HIV can be transmitted into the body. There's one more. Yep. 
Good, the anus. Awesome. So those are the four doors. Again, the vagina, open wounds, tip of the penis, and the anus. Four doors in which HIV can enter the body. So that is if someone is HIV positive, they need one of those four doors of someone else for their HIV to enter and come into contact with the other person. So we have four doors, but now we need something that actually enters the body. Those are the five fluids in the body of a person living with HIV that carry HIV, and then they can transmit it to the other person that is not HIV positive. So does anyone know what one of those five fluids could be? Well, one is blood. That's one of the one of the um, the fluids that HIV lives in. What else? Anyone? Yeah. Good. Vaginal secretions. Good. There's three more. Yep. Nice. Not many people get that one. Breast milk. Awesome. And another one. These two are a little bit similar, but they do come with their differences. So the last two are semen and pre-ejaculate. So pre-ejaculate, the difference between the two is a fluid that comes out of the male's penis during sex, but that's before ejaculation. Um, and it still contains HIV. So now it's important to know that those five fluids, again, blood, vaginal secretions, breast milk, semen, and pre-ejaculate do all contain HIV and can be transmitted if the four doors and five fluids intertwine. However, there are some fluids that do not transmit HIV, and that includes saliva, water, and urine. Those are just examples of some that do not. So now in order for it all to come together, there are only three ways that HIV can be transmitted, and that that can include the four doors and five fluids, which were the blood, vaginal secretions, breast milk, semen, and pre-ejaculate that we just talked about. So can someone guess one of the three ways that HIV can be transmitted? Yep. Good. So sexual reproduction, unprotected sex. Exactly. This is the most common mode of transmission for HIV. Anyone else? It relates to the breast milk. Yep. Mother to child. Exactly. So breastfeeding is a common cause of HIV transmission. And there's one more. Anyone? So blood to blood. So this is, this includes the open wounds for the door and the fluid is blood. And it most most often occurs through the sharing of needles. So now that we know the four doors, five fluids, and these three modes of transportation, you have much more information now that you can use to protect yourself and your loved ones from HIV. Now with all this information, it's important to discuss possible scenarios where the four doors, five fluids, and three modes of transportation are all incorporated together. So for example, can someone or can HIV be transmitted while eating with someone? No, exactly, right? Because saliva, which is mixed with the food that you're chewing and your mouth, your mouth is not a door and saliva is not a fluid. So no. How about drinking out of the same cup? Exactly. No, it can't. Again, because your saliva, the the um fluid on the cup that you're drinking out of and the your mouth are not a fluid or a door. What about can a mosquito transmit HIV? No, it can't, right? Because we talked about earlier, it's a human immunodeficiency virus. So that means that animals cannot transmit HIV. So again, now that you've learned all of this information, for any situation that you're in in the future where this might come up, you can not only educate your family, your friends, your loved ones, but you can ask yourself, is there a fluid involved? Has it come into contact with one of the four doors? And was it a part of the three modes of transmission of HIV? Again, know the four doors and five fluids and protect yourself and your loved ones from HIV. Thank you so much for having me today and for giving me a chance to have this conversation with you. Um, and I'm here for any questions that you may have. Thank you.